Good evening. I'm Siwabili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. You know, this past weekend was the American Indian Heritage Celebration at uh, the National Hispanic University, and it was wonderful to see everybody come out. It was a wonderful event, and I met a lot of people, some of the regular viewers, so it was nice to have you out there, nice to meet some of you out there. And uh, I wanted to mention that Johnny Clay was out there, and he gifted me with this beautiful beaded necklace. I don't know if you could see it or not, but it's just gorgeous. And there were a lot of great artists out there, and uh, the mayor came out, the vice mayor came out, and it was just a lot of fun. So congratulations to the committee that put that on, because it did take a lot of work and a lot of hours, and uh, they did a wonderful job. So good job. We'll look forward to next year's. And uh, I'd like to welcome this evening Antonio Gonzalez. Welcome, Antonio. And Thank Antonio you. is the American Indian Movement West Director. Welcome. Now, the American Indian Movement's been around for a long time, and you were around back when it started. Yes, and uh, actually, the American Indian Movement in this Western Hemisphere has been around uh, 516 years with this October 12 as it rolled around, you know, referred to as Columbus. Indigenous uh, Peoples the, Day. Uh, de la Raza, <laughs> or Solidarity with Indigenous right. Peoples. But uh, it became formalized, if you will, 1968, July 1968, uh, with uh, co-founders Dennis Banks, uh, Clyde Belcourt, and uh, uh, Mary Jane Wilson, Patricia Bellinger, uh, people up in, in the uh, north central U.S. and, uh, you know, began uh, because of the, uh, the problems that were occurring there in Min Minneapolis, in particular in Minnesota, mm -hmm. with the police and, uh, you know, problems like, like this. And, of course, the poverty problems and what's right. going on on the reservations, you know, culminated with uh, activity. How have you seen the movement, the American Indian movement, change over the years? Well, it, it's uh, uh, attempted from the beginning to put uh, its words into action mm -hmm. and uh, develop programs in the communities. And uh, uh, the, the American Indian people, of course, Indians throughout the world, and in this hemisphere in particular, uh, weren't uh, receiving justice in the, the countries uh, that uh, they now found themselves surrounded uh, by, uh, and in the United States it was no different. Right. Uh, and the Indian people and the Indian movement began to look at the international arena and having uh, 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 been encouraged by the elders and spiritual people to seek uh, redress and, and solutions to the problems of Indian people at the United Nations. And so the American Indian Movement, uh, aside from the many campaigns and, and activities that it's been involved, in 1974, it called for the first International Indian yeah. Treaty Conference. And it was held in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were uh, over 90 Indian nations represented from throughout the Americas. And that General Assembly in 1974 uh, determined uh, that uh, the American Indian Movement should seek uh, credentials and uh, at the United Nations and participate on nation-to-nation -nation, uh, level. Uh, that is to say, uh, uh, on equal terms and not uh, uh, subservient or, or, or being talked down to paternalistically. Right. And, uh, of course, the nations uh, weren't about to receive uh, the Indian community mm -hmm. in, in this glass house, as it's referred to. Uh, but uh, the American Indian Movement applied for what's called non-governmental uh, organization status mm -hmm. in the Economic and Social Council. 1977 uh, was a milestone in the history of Indians throughout the world uh, because uh, the International Indian Treaty Council which is the international diplomatic political arm of the American Indian Movement, acquired uh, consultative status. And uh, that was uh, historical because prior to this, 
uh, moment whenever uh, governments at the United Nations, for example, would talk about Indians, they would talk about their Indians, quote unquote, mm -hmm. very condescending, very paternalistic, mm -hmm. very folkloric, uh, but with the International Indian Treaty Council acquiring uh, consultative status, uh, uh, the governments realized they could no longer bring their Indians. And uh, today we have uh, well over 16 international indigenous organizations represented at the United Nations within wow. the Economic and Social Council, uh, addressing issues such as uh, environmental, uh, uh, prisoner uh, rights, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'd say uh, one of the greatest achievements of the American Indian Movement and the International Treaty mm -hmm. Council and other uh, non-governmental organizations uh, is the passage just last September of 07, the Declaration on the Rights of the World's Indigenous Peoples. And it was adopted uh, overwhelmingly uh, by the governments of the world. And tell us a little bit about that. Explain well, what that, uh, is. that took some doings. Uh, uh, uh -huh. And uh, the discussions at the international level began in uh, 1982, mm -hmm. after extensive studies, indeed, indigenous so peoples of the world are the most studied people That's in the true. world. That is true. Voluminous studies. So, how did that come about? How did it start? Uh, well, uh, there was an Indian person, an Indian chief, uh, Chief Destaje mm -hmm. of the Cayuga Nation, of as referred to from the uh, the Iroquois Nation, the uh, Six Confederacy. Uh, Haudenosaunee, mm -hmm. uh, 1923, uh, he went to Geneva, Switzerland, to what was then called the League of Nations. Right. And uh, he took his wampum and his stories of his people and the culture of the Native American, and uh, he spoke about the problems and that the treaties uh, mm -hmm. the, of which the Congress of the United States ratified 371 Virtually every uh, one of them have been violated. Mm -hmm. But he talked about uh, the treaties. He talked about the environment. He talked about the sacred ways uh, of uh, the American Indians. And uh, talked about pollution and safeguarding the security of food. And all of these issues, I have to say, are on the top of the agendas on every UN body today, uh, uh, including uh, resolution for the violation of treaties. Hmm. And uh, through those efforts, uh, about 1973, uh, uh, a special rapporteur, or uh, like an investigator, was appointed by the United Nations. And uh, it was a, a person by the name of Jose uh, Martinez Cobo. And uh, 1973, he started the study and it finished in uh, around 1981, and the uh, United Nations adopted his study in uh, a, a, in 82, and so it's through wow, it studies and uh, adoption by the United Nations uh, that they realized uh, at the end of his study that uh, Indian people of the world, not just Red Indians as were referred to in the Americas, mm -hmm. but uh, black Indians of the African continent, uh, white Indians of the Scandinavian region of Europe, and, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, Indians, indigenous uh, Asian people uh, 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 needed uh, to be addressed as well. And, uh, and so the study uh, uh, was adopted and the United Nations said, now we have to bring the Indians of the world uh, to the Geneva, Switzerland, to talk about uh, problems. And uh, I believe it was 1981, that was the first uh, ind uh, indigenous conference in wow. Geneva, Switzerland, to talk about Indian discrimination, indigenous peoples How does the United States view all well, of this? Well, uh, just to back up on that, uh, the United States did not adopt the Declaration mm -hmm. on the Rights of the World's Indigenous Peoples last September that I referred to earlier. 
In fact, Canada and New Zealand uh, and Australia, four countries in the world, the entire world that did not approve. And uh, in fact, there were obstacles, I mm -hmm. have to say, all the way I was involved in many of these a shame. Uh, discussions. And uh, uh, however, Australia just rescinded their negative vote. Uh, they had elections last year and the new prime minister rescinded the, the uh, the General Assembly vote and voted for in favor of the rights of the world's indigenous people. So Aborigines or the Aborigine people of Australia have a, a foot now uh, from which they can argue their uh, inherent uh, rights. Uh, New Zealand, Canada, the United States have yet to sign this declaration. And by not doing so, I have to say that they are denying that there was a holocaust. They are denying that there was a genocide, mm -hmm. that there was an attempt to exterminate uh, the red man uh, from this northern western hemisphere. And so uh, it's incumbent upon us and your listeners, our, our peoples here, to challenge this government, the new administration, right, and hopefully to <laughs> adopt uh, this declaration. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can be on equal footing. Uh, That's right. I have to give a little explanation that one of the reasons why this declaration uh, came about and was adopted is because Indian people of the world, whether we're white, black, red, or yellow, uh, politically speaking, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to determine the regions, uh, each of those colonial governments uh, that have invaded our traditional lands wherever mm -hmm. we are, <coughs> had uh, uh, separate rights and laws uh, for their Indian peoples. Mm -hmm. So there was no uniformity. Uh, for example, Indians of the United States are treated differently by law with, uh, from Indians from Mexico That's right. and Indians from Guatemala and Panama and South America, the same in Africa. Uh, new governments are un were unwilling to acknowledge the traditional peoples and their right to self-determination, that they have pre-existing rights. Right. And uh, it's quite cumbersome still for them to acknowledge and realize. The United States wants to keep their Indians, right? Yes, they had a very uh, folkloric, uh, you know, they'd rather mm -hmm. have us selling blankets and beads. That's right. Now you have a long history with the American Indian Movement. And there was a photo display that just ended in San Francisco? Yes, uh, that was a 40-year retrospective of the American Indian uh, movement. And uh, it was at the Somarts Cultural Center uh, the last two weeks of, of July. And uh, it was very successful in the sense that, uh, first of all, it was to educate uh, the community mm -hmm. in the Bay Area and uh, the people that came to the history of American Indians. And uh, many times they just see us uh, now more so in powwows, mm -hmm. but in museums and, uh, and still look at us in a very demeaning way many times. I think we only have to look at mascot issues, mm -hmm. the racism oh, yeah. uh, uh, there, both in sports and in public schools we have mascots and, and it's uh, demeaning and, and it's dehumanizing uh, to the students and, and, and to people don't Indian understand people. that no uh, you know, well many times they, they, they say that they're honoring us uh, but you know by these <laughs> things and in fact San Francisco just had an art uh -huh. installation I mentioned to you earlier tell us a little bit about that then we'll bring you back to go into more yes, detail it, it, it was uh, out at the Cliff House uh, just on the western end of, of the city of San Francisco mm -hmm on the, the beach there, and it was a, a replica uh, of 100 wooden Indians uh, with feathers and, and staffs like spears, and at the very front was uh, Buffalo Bill Cody, and uh, it was a takeoff from 1902 when Buffalo Bill Cody brought uh, this entourage of Indians to the West Coast. and paraded them right. through the public, uh, real proud uh, to him and to the, the non-Indian, but to the Indian 
people is very sad and the history mm -hmm. uh, is very sad. Many of those Indians that went on these tours uh, to Europe, for example, and traveled through this country uh, were uh, offered these jobs where at home uh, they were denied the right to hunt for their food. They were being deprived of their traditional subsistence and uh, they were near starvation and no jobs. And uh, so they would take these, uh, these kind of uh, jobs. It's kind of like the black minstrel right. uh, uh, racist uh, exactly. acts like that went circus on. Act. And, uh, mm -hmm. Humiliating to say right. the least. And that's what was being shown in San Francisco. So we had to argue. Who put it on? Uh, well, the permits that were issued by the, the federal government through the uh, Golden Gate uh, Park Service. Uh, so the city of San Francisco put it on? No, the parks? city of San Francisco uh, had nothing to do with it. Uh, the San Francisco Arts Commission oh. had nothing to do with it. But uh, they're part and parcel, they're party to this because, I mean, you can't separate the city from the beach and whose jurisdiction. So at, at, this, uh, <laughs> at this point, yes, at this point, what we're trying to do is work with the uh, San Francisco Human Rights Commission, for mm -hmm. example, the San Francisco Arts Commission, and the Golden Gate Park uh, Service uh, so we can prevent this in the f future. That's good. And to uh, sensitize these institutions to be uh, culture sensitive when, when they're displaying uh, indigenous people's uh, culture and uh, arts uh, or even ceremonies to talk about, for That's example. That's great. Okay, we'll bring you back to talk about a little bit more about that and we'll show some of the clips of what we're talking about for those who don't, ha who don't know about it. But you did bring some, a, a few pictures from the display that, or the... From um, the exhibit? Yes, from the exhibit. Yes. And let's take a look at those because I was just fascinated. You can tell us who's in the pictures, but I know you brought a few of them, so... All right. Let's see. What do we have? I know they're coming. There they are. There it is. Uh, this is, as I mentioned wow. earlier, uh, in Geneva, Switzerland, 1977. Uh, these gentlemen here, uh, to my left, uh, is Oren Lyons, and uh, to his right is Clyde Balcourt, and Greg Zeff here in the back, and uh, who has passed on. and. Uh, I don't know the gentleman right in the center, but to his immediate uh, right is uh, Bill Means, and to oh, wow. Bill Means' right there is uh, Larry Redshirt of uh, South Dakota. And uh, these gentlemen uh, initiated uh, the discussions on the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that, as I said, was just recently adopted mm -hmm. by the General Assembly uh, last September. So uh, we have much to be thankful, you know, for for the, the historical occasion there. Laura, there's a good one. This is uh, wow. 1981 in San Francisco huh. at the American Indian Movement uh, Summit. It was a, a conference to talk, talk about the many issues uh, that Indian people uh, in North America and the U.S. in particular uh, have Floyd been Western confronted there? with. Uh, is yes, that Floyd on the right. Right, the uh, see, to our right. Uh -huh. uh, that would be Floyd at the top right, and uh, to his immediate right is Bill Wapapa, and to Bill's right there is uh, Herb Paulus, and then uh, Russell Means is in the center, wow. and uh, Tyler Barlow there to his right, and Clyde Balcourt, and Bill Means, and, wow. uh, and then uh, just below him, uh, uh, John Thomas uh, and uh, Janet McLeod, she has since passed on to Spirit World, and Philip Deere, spiritual leader and advisor for American Indian Movement, and uh, was a key person uh, at Wounded Knee, for example, 1973, along with Leonard Crowdog, who isn't in the picture, and to Philip Deere's left is uh, Vernon Belcourt, who just passed away last year in mm -hmm. October. Uh, he was our minister uh, uh, of uh, our foreign minister uh, on international relations, for example. And to his left is uh, Mary Jean Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, who is still alive and well, 
and one of the co-founders. Wow. And I don't recall the, the woman to her left. Mm -hmm. And then just below uh, there is uh, Dennis Banks, and to his right, a far right, is uh, Robert Cruz of the Tohono O'odham Nation mm -hmm. from Arizona. So this is a very uh, wow. historical picture, the men and women uh, who guided and were part of the leadership, as well as the elders uh, that I have in other photos, maybe on another occasion I can show you those. Uh, this picture is uh, in, uh, was taken in 1982 in, uh, at DQ University uh, uh, up yeah. in, uh, in the north central. By uh, Davis there. By uh, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Yes, by and Davis, Davis, yes, exactly. And um, to the far, uh, let's say to the right here, to my right is uh, Rigoberta Menchu Tum from Guatemala, and she was 21 years old here. Wow. Uh, and uh, her father, as many of you know, uh, was burned alive along with 35 other indigenous people, campesinos, in the Spanish embassy in Guatemala City in January 1980. And Rigoberta fled for her life, and uh, we credentialed her through the International Indian Treaty Council, the American Indian Movement, we credentialed her so she can bring her case to the world community at the United Nations. And, and uh, she her, received the... And she received the Nobel Peace Prize yes. as a result of her right. advocacy for her people and Indian people throughout the world in 1982. And uh, I had the, the, the great honor to accompany her entourage uh, going to Oslo and and uh, meeting the king and the queen wow, of Sweden. And, uh, that was a great occasion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the picture further on uh, to her right is Bill Wapapa. He was a great leader uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area and deeply missed. Uh, he died at a very young age at 49 oh, yeah. in 1987. His son, uh, Rencho, up there. I don't know the gentleman in the middle. It'll come to me. But to his right is Prospero Orozco uh, from uh, South America, uh, Bolivia, I believe it is. And uh, to his uh, right, uh, I don't have to give too many introductions, Dennis Banks, leader uh, of the American Indian Movement and, uh, and a, a great mentor to, to many of us. But herein we see uh, a depiction of Indians of the Americas with North, Central, and South America. Wow. Oh, we only have five minutes left. Oh, I think we're going the wrong way. Do we see that one? Oh, we missed a couple. There was a few more. There it is. Okay. Uh, yes, Th this is a, uh, the longest walk. Is It's the latest campaign uh, just uh, uh, finished in, on July 11th in Washington, D.C., uh, with Dennis Banks leading uh, the longest walk, uh, and having left from uh, Alcatraz Island on February, February 11th of this year, and trekked across the country five and a half months, uh, 8,000 miles, uh, 18 mountain ranges, and uh, having left in February, the weather changed dramatically, arriving in July. I was following in the, summer. the photos and a lot so, of the yeah. But it was to raise consciousness and uh, to reenact mm -hmm. uh, the longest walk of 1978 uh, during a time of heavy anti-Indian legislation, and uh, Indian people were being cut off from their traditional lands and having been relocated. Uh, so th this effort. Uh, that just culminated uh, in July was to uh, bring to light the, the situation of Indian peoples and importantly, the uh, sacred sites, trying to focus in on the sacred sites and ceremonies and, and the right to have access to these locations and not to be bothered and disturbed and uh, the desecration of, of burial sites. And this is from the uh, this is another uh, campaign effort that is underway, I have to say, and it's uh, the Peace and Dignity. And uh, American Indian Movement supports the efforts uh, underway here, being led by a, 
uh, uh, Jose Malvido of the Tohono O'odham Nation and uh, Chicano peoples as well, Gustavo Gutierrez and uh, and uh, but it's the the uh, the unity of the North and the South, the right. eagle and the condor. condor. I know they um, we followed them four years ago when they came through and went through Watsonville, and again this year when they came through. They're in Guatemala right now, and they will join the North and the right. South in in Panama on uh, November the 14th. Oh, so it's coming up real soon. Yes, very historic. How exciting. So that's every four years. Yes. Wow. Well, you definitely have to come back, Antonio. We have so much more to hear from you because the time just flew by, as you could see. But I want to hear more about what you've done with at the UN and how mm -hmm. people can help. Oh, yes. I'd, I'd like to uh, share that time with you. I, I'd like to... Uh, expressed that uh, we're going to have a 40-year anniversary of the American Indian Movement in San Francisco, November the 24 through the 28. So uh, hopefully people will give me a call or, or check out our website and uh, to get more information okay, about this Okay, and that was the conference. website of aimwest.info? Uh, yes. Okay, I think we have that up on the screen too. So yes, so that'll be November more. 24 through the, the uh, 28. And of course, uh, a reminder to everyone that we go to Alcatraz on Thanksgiving Day, and that will be the uh, Unthanksgiving. Yes, the Unthanksgiving <laughs> Day. And uh, uh, now, will you have in, any information about the uh, Unthanksgiving on your website, or is that something we can go to another site to we, get we info? We will be posting that. Okay. Uh, people can also get uh, information on uh, the Alcatraz events <clears throat> at the. Uh, uh, Treaty Council, International Indian Treaty Council in San Francisco. And I believe that's uh, www.treatycouncil.org. Okay, good. That's that's where we have to be on our un-Thanksgiving and uh, early in the morning. Get that uh, ferry out there. Yes. Right. So and we'll, that whole week uh, of we'll, events. we'll have activities. We invite everyone to join us. Great. Okay, well, we'll hit that website and mark the calendar. So thank you so much for joining us, and My we'll pleasure. see you back soon. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again next Sunday at 6 o'clock. Don't forget about our bar sponsor and El Observador, our bi bilingual weekly newspaper. So we'll see you next week, 6 o'clock, Native Voice TV. Good night. <laughs> Yeah.